The leader of the group, uh, Mike Oga, has said that they are not going to engage in this protest as it is going to lead to instability and further heat up the polity in the uh, nation. Let's listen to what Mike Oga uh, said in this particular excerpt. Nationwide protest to shell off their plans. The police and other security agencies All are not living Every sons and daughter of Ariwa extraction to de associate themselves from the perpetrated planned nationwide protest. It is not a protest. It is a plan to destabilize Nigeria. So Mike Oga, right there, the uh, leader of the Arewa Youth for Peace and Coexistence, saying this is not a protest. It is a plan to disrupt peace in the nation and perhaps lead to, and this can actually lead to anarchy. Uh, that was what he said. But in their own uh, separate reaction, the leadership of the United uh, Nigerians Youth Congress, uh, of course, uh, coming from the president, Nasir Sulaiman, uh, said that they are in line with this uh, particular protest scheduled to hold on the uh, 1st of August 2024. It's a clear indicator of the systematic issues plaguing our agricultural sector and supply chains. After due diligence and consultation, it is in the best interests of our country that the United Nigerian East Congress will join the cause for a peaceful protest across the country. So, two different opinions, well, different strokes for different folks uh, that say. So, let me listen to what my guests have to say about uh, these issues. I'll uh, start with uh, Mr. Adesumbo uh, Barichuku. I want you to uh, react to this. There have been quite a number of warnings and you know something similar to threats for those who might want to engage in this protest is that really the right thing to do <laughs> definitely not um but what they are doing what is expected of them to do from the government side and those who are also planning to protest are also doing what they are expected to do as citizens mm. and it is within their right uh, to protest against any uh, actions of government that is affecting or impacting their life negatively. Now, the question we should ha be asking ourselves, or that people have been asking, is there any need for protest? So, let me have your reaction to that. Is there any need for protest? Of course. When you have a situation where, before the government came up, a dollar was exchanging officially, 461 naira. Today, the official market is going back and forth around 1,500. That has its own impact on the prices of commodity. Inflation was around 24%. That was the headline inflation. Food inflation as at that time was around 30%. Today, headline inflation is 34 that's about 10 percent increase and food inflation is over 40 percent prices of commodity to break it down before they come uh they, before they took over a bag of cement was around three five now it's dancing around seven thousand five hundred a bag of rice was 35 to forty thousand, depending on the brand now it's between 70 and 80. So when you look at and every other high terms, you understand, day one of the administration subsidy is gone. Market responded to that. Before that statement, petrol was 189 official, 195 to 200 unofficial. Today, 580 official, uh, 650 to 800 unofficial. So when you look at all these indices and people look at them, minimum wage, not until two weeks ago, or less, last week, uh, was not raised from 30,000. That means for a whole year plus, people had their income pegged in the same spot and the prices of everything that they have to, because of cement and other cost of production, transportation costs, rent had all gone up all on the same income that has not increased mm. so looking at all of that you would know that yes haven't waited for government promises 
we will give CNG buses up to now. There are no, the only CNG buses I have seen, like I used to say, is the one in Ogun State, facilitated by the governor of that state. Mm -hmm. We don't have anyone in Oyo State moving in any way. The one promised by the federal government is still in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. We don't know when it's going to come out of that pipeline. So when you look at all of this, you keep hearing palliative. How many people have gotten this palliative? We keep hearing conditional trans, uh, transfer, cash, cash transfer mm. to uh, 50,000 households, 600,000 households. I said, okay, let's pick the 600,000. An average household in Nigeria is a family of five. Multiply 600,000 by five. That's about 30 million Nigerians. Mm. Now, what is that compared to you at the other hand? $100 million for presidential jets. $20 billion naira. For the vice presidential launch, mm. you understand. Similar amount for the presidential palace in Lagos. You have you are from Lagos. You were living in Bodilong. Bodilong itself is a palace on its own. Why would you? Can't you stay? Whenever President Buhari is to leave Abuja, he goes to Daura, not Lagos. And if you are going to Lagos, you have a house there. Why would you waste money on all of that? In the means of all these things, and Senator got to. 200 million worth of vehicle reps 150 million so when you look at what government is spending at their own hand what they are trickling down to the masses and of course not going around and we keep talking about this inflation the price attack the price attack the price deal with the producer so that prices will fall no it is their own palliative orientation that they want to prefer so when you look at all of this and 12 months is more than enough honeymoon period for any government. This government has surpassed that, and that's why the people are saying, it's like, talking is not enough. We need to go out in the streets and demonstrate without causing violence. Perhaps that would get the attention of the government. And of course, I want to say this, that... The protests have achieved the same even before mm. it started. Mm. You know why? I believe the government needs a shaking. Mm. And they are already shaking. <laughs> because they are making appeal, meeting all manner. That is a sign of shaking. Because they know once it starts, this is Nigeria. <laughs> we have the population and so many people are hungry. Why some of us are a little bit reserved about the idea of protest is because of the dimension it usually takes <laughs> whenever protest is being organized in Nigeria. And that's why, because of those innocent people that will be affected, because one thing with our protesters is that they will not go to government house. They won't go to Asso Rock, even in Abuja. They will gather, gather somewhere, they stop public order in the name of protest. And those who, if they don't go out, will not be able to hit, will not be affected. Those are just our concern. And in the neighborhood, looting always takes place. Some people will take advantage of the robbing others and these are not the people that have offended us we are all in the same boat together you understand so that's why we are in this situation and who do we blame for all of it it is the government you have subscribed to that job do it effectively and all the people there from the president down to the least man were comfortable before they got into political offices why can't they just go there and serve why would you still be wasting government money on personal things? Mm. These are issues that Nigerians are having, and that's the reason why we are having this situation situation now. All right, I'm still going to take further reactions from you, but let me take this straight to Barrister Fulusha Olapo. Is this what we need at the moment? Protest? Oh, it's our right, and it's an upfront on Nigerians mm. uh, for Mr. President to say the protest is not needed. No, he can't tell us that. Uh, first, because Nigeria um, is a sovereign country under God and not a banana republic. And secondly, uh, democracy is founded on conflicts and resolution. There would always be conflict and there sh will be always be a way to settle those conflicts. If not, the judiciary wouldn't have been the third arm of government. Democracy knows that, that 
in at every point in time human beings are not perfect the fickleness the fickleness of our of, of our mind will not allow us even to be that perfect so if the people felt aggrieved with the policy or decisions of government then to that extent the people should and be uh, have the right to protest mm. it is when you are telling us or the citizens that the protest is not needed it means that you are beating us and you are not allowing us to cry mm. it is expected that when you are beating a person it is that person's right to shout and cry and but when you if you don't want that shouting and crying anymore what do you do you call the child and you give him probably a karaoke whatever you can give at least to ensure that normalcy you know uh, prevailed of course you've beaten and that is why the Yorubas will say that we can all you, you you can always you know correct your child with the right hand mm. and when you do that you 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 draw him near to you again with the left hand so it is correction and the uh, conflict is a very 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 uh, fundamental thing in democracy mm. now thirdly is that the constitution itself provided for that and mr ig does not have that right whatsoever to give conditions against the fundamental human right of people mm. nobody has that the only institution of government that has that that possesses that power is the judiciary so it is unconstitutional it is illegal for mr ig to tell the protesters quote unquote and unquote to submit names and whatever and whatever it is beyond him and i think is majority of those police uh, uh officers are lawyers so they shouldn't behave as if they don't know the law of course before you become an ig you would have been so so cooked quote unquote in law before you just be you know just talking as if even the police act itself the police act did not pro did not provide for uh the citizens to apply for uh permission it knows it is our right the freedom of movement freedom of speech freedom of conscience freedom of everything so that is guaranteed by the constitution so if the constitution granted that nobody can erode from that right except the court of law and since they refuse to go to the court of law to that extent the uh, mr ig is 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 unconstitutionally wrong mm. now whether or not because my colleague here had really 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 given this foundation of mm. what is happening is the protest necessary what should have been the the response of government even regarding this simple of course we know what is happening government might not know what is happening i said that because my dean when i was in uh, in the university he, he usually tell us in class that a yes man is your enemy if you have a friend and everything is just say all the time is yes sir yes sir yes sir he cannot even give me give you his own idea he said or right, i want to go and eat yes sir i want to sleep yes sir i want to do this yes sir and majority of the people the majority of the people uh the our leaders usually surround them with themselves with the special assistant the special assistant to the special assistant the assistant to the assistant the uh, all the assistants that they usually you know you know provide around themselves are the yes men so probably they may not they might not have even given the government or the president himself uh the the the, the real response from the people this is not the first time sub subsidy is being removed from the f in, in Nigeria. Abacha removed it and institutionalized the 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 effect. So he set up a PTF, Petroleum Trust Fund, and the effect of PTF was felt all over the federation. Mr. Jonathan removed it and he set up a sure P. Whether that is successful or not, that's not the issue. But we were not throwing rice at people like dogs and pigs and beggars in the streets. No. They call some people 
we'll give you work, you are going to do this, you are going to do that, and a whole lot of things. At least we see. But the APC government, not, fr not even uh, Mr. Tenumbo alone, even from Buhari himself, has, you know, have this, I don't know, I don't know where they got that from. Unconditional pr transfer, uh, giving 20, 20 trucks or 22 trucks of food to some people for to, to, to begin. Now we've been doing that. Mr. Vice President Oshimbadu during his time nearly died because he was distributing 5,000 naira to people. Mm. So how has that 5,000 naira affected positively the lives of those people? Now assuming that even the whole 22 trucks of rice is coming to, uh, okay, came to Oyo, how much trucks do you think Ibadan alone will take? And how many families do you think are in Ibadan? And how many, how many bags, how many meals will a family be able to take out from whatever ration that they were given? Remember, it was only rice that is being given. What of the accessories that will go with the rice? The stew, the meat, the fish, the whatever. So, you see, it appears government just decided to be anti-people. And the people has the right <coughs> to respond that, Mr. Government, Mr. President, President, it appears your policies and, and decisions are against us, the commoners. It is not, it is, it is not coincident that, that democracy is, is defined as the government of the people by the people and for, the, for people. the people. See that definition. People came out three times in one statement. Meaning that the essence of democracy itself is about the people. And when you go to section 14 or 16 of our constitution, you find that the essence, the reason for government is, for, is, for, uh, to, uh, is to ensure the welfare and security of the people. That is the reason we vote them there. But not for personal agenda and for personal interest. If the government are not having the interest of the people in mind, then the people can wake them, can poke them by way of protest uh, and say, Mr. President, what you are doing, we are not feeling fine at all. For one year, we have been unable to eat one, one meal a day. One meal. One meal. And, of course, you can, there's, before at least, we have gr graduated poverty. Some people may be poor than the other. So, if you have somebody that is, that you are, you are, you are, you are richer than at least you can still come to you and say, But I have many 1000. But today, they, you cannot even go to it's just the same level. So, to that extent, the protest is okay. And for government to be, you know, saying it is not necessary, saying they should come and this, this, and even, you know, threatening in the first time will, you know, only aggravate it mm. because the Yorubas will say words, mode of approach. Words especially mm, can bring mm. out cola from the mm. pocket the same way it can bring mm. knife mm. from the pocket. So mm. the government should mind it and ensure that rather than being, you know, you know, being, you know, doing some sort of grandstanding, mm. then rather they should, you know, call these people dialogue. And in the dialogue, let them uh, appreciate the fact that fundamental uh, protest is a fundamental right of every Nigerian. Mm. The only thing we pray is that it shouldn't should spiral into violence. Yes, that's all. Uh, well, as regards uh, negotiating, as regards uh, dialogue, you know, the challenge with that is you know, we do not know the organizers of this protest, but of course we're going to take, we're going to take further reactions on that. Let me take this straight to Mr. Desun uh, Bobadijoko. You said something the other time about the fact that, you know, the, you know, based on the trajectory of protests in Nigeria, oftentimes it is, you know, greeted with... Uh, some illicit activities and that is the concern of government as well don't you think that they are you know their reason is valid based on that what they are expected to do is to be at the protest ground mm -hmm. to ensure that that does not happen now before we were saying that uh, no face behind it and all of that but yesterday a senior advocate of nigeria wrote to the ig mm -hmm telling them the organization he represents, I think uh, Take It Back Movement, mm. uh, which that is a known body mm. already. And some other group of people have also identified yeah. with the protest. So you already know whom to deal with. Mm. Now, in the letter he wrote, he stated 
uh, the Higu Square in Abuja mm. as the venue mm. and other public mm. uh, facilities. That is where they are going to be gathering. Now, all you need to do, we know the public facilities that could accommodate crowd in Ibadan, for instance. Uh, Bafe Meola Stadium, mm. uh, Adama Singer Stadium, uh, if the Trans Amusement Park was still there, Secretariat trend about. These are places where people used to gather a war road, Mokola Bridge, mm. or I mean Honda and Bridge. About. So these are places where such gathering used to occur. All you need to do is deploy personnel to these places. Mm. Unharmed. If they are going to be needing harm, that will be as a result of backup. Mm. Because protesters cannot be seen gone. That will send some signal into their own spines and it will aggravate yes. or activate some tendencies within them. Mm. So once you see officers, they will protest, carry their placard, chant all manner of songs, say all manner of things. They are not talking to you. They are talking to the government. Observe what they are doing. And if they want to sleep there, that means your officers will have to pass the night with them. Mm -hmm. And if they are safe, because they say it's a 10-day Event, event. event. Mm. So whether they will be going home and coming back, we don't know yet. You understand? But if you go back to what simi uh, the similar event we've had of recent, 2012-2020, the protesters did not leave the venue. Freedom Park in Ojota mm. was the venue for 2012. The protesters were there. Food were being brought in. They were being served food. People were coming to address the crowd. Music were being played and on and on. 2020, Lekki Tollgate, same thing was uh, happening there until that uh, unfortunate incident happened. So when you look at that, but those are areas where we had uh, you know, a successful protest. In Ibadan, people were just going and coming back. I think Iwuru was a flashpoint mm. in Ibadan at so that time, though. We had soda uh, incidents in other areas too, like Ojo. We had issues in Ojo too, challenge area. But the thing is, we know areas where protests uh, that have served as protest venue in the past. The police cannot claim ignorance of that. Those are areas you deploy your officers to and just station them. Once the protesters arrived, the commissioner of police in various command can also choose to address them. Yeah, of course. That's, yes, we are here to support you. We are not here to threaten you in any way. We advise you to source. Please be civil mm. in whatever you are doing. Do not destroy the properties of anybody. And if anybody chooses not to join your protest, please do not disturb them. them. So once all those addresses are come and make it make it make sure that it is covered, mm. is is recorded, so that those are the evidence you will use when things get out of hand and you are now forced to use uh, uh, to resort to uh, force. But to now be saying to be hitching is like putting the cart before the mm. horse. You first of all do your own part first. Don't just assume that it will be violent from day one. Forget. The social media uh, noise. The <laughs> number of those people who are on social media are not in the country one. Yeah. Those who are in the country will not come out on day one. They will wait mm. and observe the way the protest is going before they will now come and identify with them using their personality to want to stock us from political points. It happened during the answers. Mm. We saw that happening. So when you look at all of this, the police is supposed to know the right thing to do. Yes, DSS has gathered intelligence, which is a normal thing, and they have made it known to the public, though they will not dis uh, disclose everything. Mm. But those whom they have identified, if truly they are existing, those ones would have known that it's like a bubble has been busted. You understand? But on the part of the protesters too, they are mostly um, sincerity in whatever you are doing. You cannot claim to be more Nigerian than the rest of us or uh, the rest of Nigerians who are not interested in because they look at it, the protest is not going to solve any problem. They are problem. They have taken their own destiny into their hands. So, there are issues that are coming up which we look at. For instance, unconditional release of Inambikanu. How does that 
concerned right. bad governance. I don't what's the relationship? There's no nexus. You understand? So by the time you begin to do that, you're already profiling mm. <laughs> the the protests. You understand? By yourself. And that would that is dangerous. You understand? Going by the manner at which or the antecedent of this part of uh, this set of individuals. So it is very dangerous and that is where uh, the government is raising concern about and those who have also spoken that's where they are also the traditional rulers and all of that because by the time you begin to flash such uh, issues linking it to a nationwide protest you are already saying that you have ulterior motive and no government you understand and for the records most organized protests are never successful Yes, because it's like when we used to do vigilante in our community, what used to lead to that? Some band criminal gangs would have written a letter to the community. We just see a post there. And of course, the community would now say, ah, no, we cannot be sleeping. When these people will come, let us do vigilante. You understand? So whatever the government is doing now is a form of vigilante because <laughs> notice has been given to them. We are coming to bug your house. So they would not, they will prepare. But the ones that are usually successful are the unannounced ones. The ones that are spontaneous. Do you understand? Mm. That people just, you know, the spirit will descend and possess as many people as possible. And those ones possessed by the spirit will be the one to lead and charge out, all out. Those ones, because there is no preparation, usually gets the attention of government. So that's where I have concern over this that we need to just watch it. I'll still stay with you, Mr. Addison or Joko. So, I mean, talking about the possible brain behind this protest, of course, you made mention of that take it back movement, but of course, they've only expressed their uh, opinion to join this particular protest. But there was a tweet by Bayo Nanuga, the special advisor to the president on information and strategy, and in fact, he said that some uh, elements, some disgruntled politicians are uh, the ones responsible or the ones behind. Uh, the philosophy behind the idea of this protest and in fact he mentioned one politician specifically in the person of uh, uh, Mr. Pito, the, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party during the 2023 general election but the question is do you believe there is a political undertone to this protest? We cannot say that for now opposition would always want to identify with the people mm -hmm. whether or not they are sincere <laughs> is another thing and entirely. And the EPC did that in <laughs> yes. uh, 2012. I understand. Uh -huh. They will always want to identify with the people because they are in the opposition. Mm. So they are part of the people. Mm. They are Nigerians too. Mm. They have the right to their opinion. So if they say something, you look at what they have said. But you don't have to be a warmonger mm. by trying to like profile somebody. You understand? Uh, or wanting to put... Uh, the, 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 the whole plans on somebody it doesn't make sense. shouldn't be coming from a government official. Mm. That is where Bano, uh, Bayo Nonuga would have uh, mm -hmm. been grooving. But the thing is, he need to watch it. He's been making series of utterances, mm. which is the marketing the administration is serving in. Mm. And he should know that if he further aggravate the people and they come all out full-fledged on the government and the government comes down, he has no job again. Mm. So he needs to be very careful, be more diplomatic, be more civil in his utterances and let there be some sense of maturity in whatever I will say. He's a media person and he's a veteran. Mm -hmm. He should not be embarrassing the profession. That is what I will give to Mr. Abayo right, and I'm that. All right, uh, let me take this to uh, Barrister uh, for Lucio Lacqua. You said the other time that the IGP shouldn't have uttered a statement that there is a condition to this protest as it is against the constitutional right of each and every uh, Nigerian. But then let's look at the argument raised by the um, IGP. You know, if we have all of the addresses, the contacts of those who want to get involved in this protest, then we'll be able to know what to do if things go the wrong way. And also he said that they have received an intelligence report that some foreign machineries may want to hijack this protest. Don't you think he has a valid argument on that basis? You wanted to make me their lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be that. Well, speak to Ordinarily, you. they should know what to do. And I mentioned it here. Uh, the law court is there. It, the only institution of government that has the power to diminish the right of any person is the law court. And if you needed any information like that, then you should go to seek that permission from the court. 
is not is is just an agency of government our servant they pay him from our money our tax mm. so you don't tell your master that you should come and do this or that or you may lose your job so you should take it easy i'm not saying whatever he might have at his back of his mind it might be valid i don't know but if you have such thing there's a way of doing it i've said it earlier we are not in a banana republic we are a republic of we are a federal republic of nigeria a sovereign nation under god where that sovereign belongs to the people not the government that sovereign belongs to the people so to that extent you have to respect the people so you don't you don't you don't just assume you don't just assume god over them and that's what he's trying to do so if he has any issue with that because of so 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 let him go and tell the court probably for public interest or public policy let the court rule that okay because of what you have said let us do that you can do this and the protesters again but again the courts cannot even derogate from the right of the people but it can at least limit such whatever that may happen so mr uh, um, no, the ig, the IG mm. knows I, I actually know that he knows what to do but because police in nigeria did not see they don't they never saw themselves as protectors of the people more oftentimes they see themselves as protectors of government and there's different between the two they are supposed to take the people and the government together my friend here said they, they should not be biased in fact there's no there's no if you remember the end ends last time mm. even our dear governor here went to join them actually and he danced with them and talked with them and they were happy yeah hey, 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 that's all that's all they needed and if you remember too the NSAS did not you know turn violence and until some people just have a brainwave and send the military against them mm. so if nigerians want to protest or protest then to the extent to which they want to do that my colleague had actually, you know, even wrote, you know, stated things that the police ought to have done. I think we are doing a whole, a whole, a whole lot of job for them here. They should come and pay us because, <laughs> <laughs> yes, because these are the things that they should know. Ordinarily, you don't, you don't just, you don't, you don't just, you know, drop your, uh, 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 your duty for the people to do for you. You are trying to, 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 to church us, telling us to do your job for you. At the end of the day, you get paid. No, it shouldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. They have the intelligence. They have the means to which to gather intelligence. They have everything. And they even identify where... And everybody knows if anything is going to happen that is public like that. They go to a public place. So to that extent... You see, I, I, I read somewhere yesterday that a, a group wrote to uh, the uh, F city minister to allow them use... Uh, uh, what is it now? The that place that they usually mm, Eagle, Eagle Square. Square. Eagle Square. Mm. Of course, mm. he might deny. He might. But are we going to say those people that wrote him doesn't have a name? If government want to do, actually want to be peaceful with themselves, they know what to do, and this protest may not even come up at all. Like eventually, mm. because today, if f food prices crashed, rather than throwing. 10 kg of bags to about three people in the streets and you crash f food prices Prices. that even the poor man the poorest of the poor man that they usually throw that thing to or they are supposed to give the conditional whatever to if he's able to buy even the seventy thousand naira, the minimum we now cannot even buy a bag of rice hmm. so what are we talking about so if he crash the price the prices of uh, this thing or reverse some of his decisions that are toxic to the people. Then to that extent, you will see before uh, uh, August 1st, things will be coming down. And people will say, yeah, she been got a fair she not looting she. Exactly. Yes, at the end of the day, there might not even be a protest anymore. The reason for protest, like my colleague here said, is to let government understand, to see that your decisions or your policies are against us. We are suffering. That is the essence. You are aggrieved with some of the policies of government. And you, you, nobody should be threatened for that. You have a right to be aggrieved. Even in this place, in the, in the, in the studio, we can be, we can be, we can be, we, we can, we may not be able to, 
you know agree with what we might we might agree with some of them and mm. we not agree with some, some of them and we can even differ in Definitely. all of them we have the right to do that and we should behave civilly too if even after we disagreed with ourselves shake as ah, it's one of those things we are doing the work of nature the, the, the national duty so that is it and not that somebody will be threatening another okay if they bring the police the army is to say they are on they are, they are red alert so to do what to kill the citizens then let them kill them now. If they kill them, then who would they be leading? I just pray. I pray that governments should talk less. Mm. Let them talk less. Don't grandstanding will not work. It will only aggravate him because a hungry man is an angry man. A hungry man already knows that he doesn't have anything. Like Ben Gadebu said in, in one of his LPs, he said if there is if there is if there is if there is an attack somewhere. It is the rich people that will say, hey, hey, but the poor people will drop a bottle and pow, what do you do? That is it. So if you really, if you are, if you are carrying, the Yoruba have an advice for people like that. If you are carrying an oil, so you have to beware where you tread. So that what you are carrying, a palm oil of that, if you, what you are carrying should not, will not spill. They should mind what they say at this time because people are actually hungry. And Mr. Bayon Onuga, to be sincere, I am disappointed because I, I have been his fan from Temple, from all that and all that, to the news and all that. But suddenly he turns to this. What happens, Sir Ayman Binu? What happens to us? <laughs> <laughs> to be sincere, Ruben Abati, the same thing. And uh, what is that? Um, additional. 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 These are very great gentlemen, veterans brilliant and uh, they come to government and they become jellyfish well that's another God have mercy on them that's another good still staying uh, with you looking at some of the things that perhaps brought us to this point which has to do with the reforms of the current administration well we various government functionaries have again come out to reiterate the fact that we need to be patient as far as all of these reforms are concerned that we need to be calm and you know believe that all of these reforms will yield Dividend. I mean, will you the right results as time goes by? What are the reforms? I've not seen one. I mean, moving subsidy, <laughs> free subsidy remover. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. Floating like of the Naira, unification of the exchange rates. Okay, he mentioned some achievements yesterday, but those ones are not even there. Mm. He mentioned that uh, the this uh, minimum wage, mm -hmm. one, uh, student loan, two, uh, credit, uh, whatever. So those are the three things you mentioned for mm. for one year and some months. See, even a military government removes subsidy, and he ensures that he cushion the effect of that removal. And the reason they removed the uh, Mr. Buhari refused to remove subsidy in his time because that PIA that they were quoting now has been passed even in his time he suspended that portion of it and he said by the time the new government will come in dangote refinery would have been working mm. and to that extent it will bridge serve as a cushion mm. probably the price will not rise up like that and a whole lot of things so he said he's going to leave it for the incoming administration the incoming administration rather than checking its 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 books just on emotion just says subsidy subsidy gone, gone. Mm -hmm. without even planning for the effect of that and immediately he said that the market stock exchange re uh, 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 reacted and today we are here where we are then people were telling him that we are not producing we import everything up to toothpick <laughs> no most of these things we wear we, they do they, they manufacture them in nigeria here before until uh, sap if you remember if you are around then mm. 1988 or there about when the textile and everything every all these manufacturing companies have to leave nigeria in droves today we have to import all of them even maybe from Beni, we import anything maybe from niger even the food we eat we import them so if you are not importing i mean if we are not exporting how then do we would we uh have a gain in whatever policy that is going to do with international business. Yes. Mm. So floating our money is means that you are importing inflation to Nigeria. Because most of the time whatever what is happening is that 
the market force that is against the law in the first place. You now I've been saying that the the the, the CBN Act said it is the bank that should stipulate the value of the naira. Mm. So doing what he did was illegal, but unfortunately we are just here, you know, Nigerians suffering. But it's okay, and that is why I said this poli this protest might be necessary or is necessary. But the only thing that I'm praying for is that government should mind their words, mm. that sh they should mind their actions, so that at the these people too should ensure that the protest is peaceful, at least with like the one week they started during the answers. Yes. The first week was very good. You g you'll be going to work, you join them, you dance, go to your work. They are not stopping you, they are not saying you should not go to where you are going to. But until somebody just decided to do otherwise. Mm. So I will pray for a peaceful one. And all for Mr. President to do what is right to ensure that everybody could access food. If food is removed from suffering, suffering is as well as ended. Mm. So it is food. A hungry, a, a hungry man is an hungry. angry man. That a, a hungry man lacks rationality. He cannot think. So that is why if they say some things that, are, that could infuriate them, because they are hungry already, they are angry people, then it could boomerang or blow up. So we don't want this country to blow up. We want a nation that is peaceful, that is flowing with milk and honey, that all of us will enjoy together. Not some cliques, mm. not some cabas, not some politicians that earns as much as 35 million naira a month and they are giving uh, the labor, uh, uh, workers only 70,000 that cannot buy a bag of rice. So you right. see... As minimum wage anyways. As minimum... For those on the least, <laughs> okay, there. of course, those who are on the higher, okay, they will earn much more than that. But then let me take this to uh, Mr. Adesumbo uh, Bade Joko. Now, like I said earlier, quite a number of people have spoken about this issue. Quite a number of government functionaries, eminent personalities have all spoken. But the concern of some Nigerians is that if all of these people had been this concerned about the state of the nation right from time, perhaps we will not be at this point. Your take on that? Well, everybody has a right to his opinion. Mm. You know, one thing, even the APC as a party, a uh, victim of that. But when you are outside, yeah. <laughs> 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 when you are not on the field playing, <laughs> you, are, you are the best coach, yes. you are the best player, <laughs> you are MVP. This <laughs> is when you get <laughs> into, into the pitch that uh, you realize that the, the, what is it called now? The footballers are doing a very great job. Mm. So that is what uh, is happening. And of course, uh, you can't... Why you could say, I never knew things were this deteriorated, that he almost quit the job. Well, the reason why he didn't quit, nobody knows. So, this man is there, though he's not saying he's going to quit, but he believes he's doing something about it. Mm. So he's the one that knows the mess. Yes, yeah, some of us, whatever is out there. But the need, government need to be communicating more. And they need to listen more too. Because if they are listening to what some of us have been saying, you cannot just be governing based on your own opinion. Or because, must you contract everything? Because what is fueling palliative is contracts. Government will not go to buy those rights by themselves. Some people will collect the contract. And those are the ones that lobby the presidency so that they will not stop that program. Look at all your options. Then select the best that would have impact. So that's the thing. So those saying that, well, I understand them quite perfectly. And if they had been this vocal about our situation right from time, perhaps we would not have to you know, take to the streets to protest. In fairness to some of them, they've not really kept quiet. Take Akitiko Abubakar, for instance, and Peter Obi. Mm. Yeah. Even though their political parties have not really helped, they've disappointed us. But they are, the two individuals have really done well in terms of pointing to the mess of the government or the blunder they, about, they just committed. So, and we give them credit to that. So, they, we can't say they, if they have been talking enough. Or show sure, sure that has never kept quiet. All along, he has always been, though his militant approach is what people are not really happy about. But the thing is, people have been speaking. And those of us who are privileged to come on here too, 
we've never kept quiet. Right from day one of this administration, I've been following their policies and I've criticized the ones that I know is not going to work. And when those things failed, we, say, we, we can say we said so. So these are things. It's just the government that needs to listen more to the people. Now, if the protest should hold on the 1st of August 2024, the real question now is, will that solve our problem? How will that you know, affect the price of tomato in the market? I mean, that's the major issue. Is that really going to resolve that is all an, of our that, challenges? That is just an excuse and an attempt for, to frustrate the protest. But is that whether going not, to solve the problem? Well, that's whether the or not it will solve the problem, it would help the government to see the wrongness in their decisions and change approach. The, the change of approach will now lead to solution to the problem. Do you understand? There, there are immediate solutions and there are long midterm solutions, there are long term solutions. What they focused on was midterm and long term. You understand? They, they did not do much in the area of immediate solution. And the one they could think of was the palliative that would not go around. That's where the problem is. If they had attacked the price as we suggested, Nobody will have any cost to go down. For instance, if by January this year, government had looked at it, ah, people have suffered, okay, call the producers, crash the price of rice to 40000 from 80 that it was in January. Mm. That will go around because, like he said earlier, even the beggars can afford to buy a cup rather than going to beg because they can't afford to buy it. Would not be able to afford it. That is that one. We don't need to distribute palliative to anybody. Just deal with the market forces and let the price be as an affordable rate. People would not complain mm -hmm. because an hungry person is an angry person. And when a nation is hungry, that's a hungry nation. Mm -hmm. And you cannot govern an angry nation effectively. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Barista Folesho Lapo, if this protest should take place eventually, uh, would that solve our problem? That is the major thing we should be concerned about. Is that going to affect the price of tobacco in the market? Is that going to bring down this inflationary trend? That is the major issue. Well, um, let me say this rather than just saying yes or no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one, <laughs> it's been able to achieve something already government is shaking they realize that probably they may have goofed one way or the other and that is why all these threats trying to mm. to part with some people at the back you know trying to call people uh, uh, to, to call a dog a bad name to hang it and a whole lot of things is happening in fact uh, uh, the ministers have to meet, meet urgently the governors so it is happening you know, before now, it was just like one of those things. It's like they can do anything to Nigerians and they have a thick skin. So, and go scot free with it. You know, Mr. Uh, uh, Sonny said in one of his, one of his tweets, tweets that he did to ex is now, to when he was saying that Akwabio should not uh, pass some places in Abuja, that the people might attack him. So, these things are trying, you know, government knew now whether Mr. President had a good advisor or not, whether they advised him well or not. So he's feeling the heat now. He knows that, wow, probably we have not been able to, you know, uh, uh, you know meet the needs of the lead, of the commoners. And that is why these things are, co are coming up. Then secondly, and for that alone, there has been a success. Whether or not it brings out something, but it will. Because things will not remain the same anymore. You remember when NSAS first started? It was like, it's not going to, NSAS will remain for life. And today we do not, I mean, that SARS will remain for life. But today we do not have SARS anymore. At least. So, but it means that at least, the, even during the SARS, you know, even that demonstration even helped the police in some point, and their salaries have to be increased. I don't know for now, but at least then. So, you see, it's going to, you know, make government to sit up. Mr. President usually says something that he knows what we need. He can't know what we all need. He has advisors, 
but unfortunately he did not advise his advisors well. If he had done that, he would have advised his advisors to advise him well. <laughs> unfortunately, again, he has yes men as his people. They cannot tell him the truth. And that is why immediately he chose his ministers. Majority of us knows that he's heading the wrong way. Those people around him cannot look into his face and talk. The likes of Okonje Weala, the likes of Adeshino, the now president of uh, uh, African Development uh, Bank. Uh, yes. They wanted to... Uh, 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 Mr. Jonathan wanted to make him something. He said, no, this is what I was told to do. This is what I was coming to do. And that is what I will do. And Mr. Jonathan has to call Abbasanjo. Abbasanjo, leave him alone. Let him do whatever I wanted to do. These are technocrats that knows what to do. And Okonje Uyala will not tell somebody to be throwing money all around in the sake of palliative. Palliative is an affront to Nigerians. Nigerians are not beggars. I continue to say that. Palliative is like begging, you know, giving beggars some things. Like the Yorubas will say, Ajegba man pamije. It's wrong. You are telling them they don't, they are worth nothing. And I used to ask, how much does a life of, the life of a Nigerian worth? How much? Let's put it on a scale. One naira, two naira, one million. But you should know that a life of a person should be inestimable. But lives of Nigerians, somebody called in in a program that was this morning that somebody died on the streets yesterday. They have to call the police to come and take the cops. Probably after suffering and all that. In the streets. You can't, you can't hold 100,000 now. You want to go and buy food stuff. By the time you, go, you come back to your home, you would have become mentally somehow. Because you'll be thinking, you'll be you know, doing a whole lot of arithmetic that doesn't exist in Lacombs that we used to use then. So what is happening? So all this is going to come. Government is going to see that, going to know that, okay, we have not been meeting these people. People's needs. Do you think this protest will achieve that? Of course, it's, it's achieving it already. Or you think all this uh, 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 that uh, ta removal of tax from food importation? You know, it was after this mm. notice was given and all mm. that. So it's achieving already, but it may, it might not be in the uh, as loud as we wanted mm. it to be. But at least some things will be happening under the ground, underground. Mm. All right, now let's look at some other argument that I have trailed this uh, particular issue. And now some people have the opinion that, well, the president himself was part of a protest in the year 2012. That was when subsidy was removed by uh, President mm -hmm. Goldog Jonathan partially, you know, as at the time. And so people are saying, why, why would you stop people from protesting if you were part of a protest some years back? Of course, the president responded and said, I was part of a peaceful protest. But then what's your own uh, you know, take on all of that? Yes, um, you know, I, I, I've been hearing that for the past one week, mm. and I'm laughing. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing is because, um, you know, these politicians, uh, all those things are just trying to give political dimension to mm. the protest, and it will end up affecting the intention of, of those mm. who wanted to organize the protest in the first instance, because you don't have to bring issues like that up. You understand? Before 2012, there was 2010. Save Nigeria group mm. movement led a protest. What was it about? To give President Jonathan, who was VP then, mm. the presidential powers because our president then, Yara Dua, was nowhere to be found. Mm. And government decisions are being delayed because of that. And the nation cannot be holding, uh, be held to ransom because by some kaba. So that movement came up, protest was organized, they marched on Abuja, and that led to uh, first, uh, uh, the Senate President, David Mack, mm. to evoke the doctrine of necessity, mm. you understand, which has now led to further amendment in the Constitution mm. that would prevent such kind of lacuna again. We cannot have vacuum in government. Now, the beneficiary of that protest was not the one in charge. And a good number of the people that protested in his favor were the ones that rose against him in 2012. So why will you start your own history from 2012 mm -hmm. and forget about the 2010? Mm. So these are issues that I used to have with people mm. that come. In as much as I may not like the decision of government, but when I see some other things that are being 
drunk, I will also not keep quiet on that. Mm. So on that one, I'm not on the same page with them. Mm. Protests are meant to be peaceful. NSAS was peaceful until SAS was ended, disbanded by the IGP then. Mm. That automatically is supposed to make the protesters to do what? To disorganize and go back to their houses. But they stayed further. And NSAS changed to end bad governance. And that's why I said this bad governance that is coming up again, we don't have a good uh, history about it. And end bad governance went on for like five days. It was already getting violent in places like Ojota, Igomo, and all those places in Lagos. And the government had to impose a curfew. Curfew means what you, should move. you should move away from there. Mm. Deviant to that curfew was what led to the shooting. But people will not forget, they will not pick the story again from when it turned violent. But from where army came in and of course the army came in to enforce the curfew so with all those background caution need to be taken concerning this one because hashtag bad governance tinubu must go these are things that are already been attached to this protest mm. and those are the dangerous trend tendencies that we need to watch out for because the security agencies will protect their commander-in-chief using every <laughs> powers that they have and the mm. instrumentality of the state. Mm. So, they need to know all of that. So, if you are going to uh, go out to face that, fine. But be civil and be peaceful in the protest. Mm. You may not have some of us joining you because... So, uh, you are not going to join the protest. Is that what you are saying? <laughs> yes. Is I'm already protesting joking? here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to do that and, I've been, do, and I've been doing that before they even thought of organizing their yeah, protest of course. so for I started protesting before them but how's the organizers of this protest will need you to take to the street to yourself well they have to reach out to me <laughs> well uh, where is the pollution or lap or now I wanted to speak to this there seems to be a tribal and ethnic dimension to this uh, protest for example all these indigo has warned youth in this uh, southeast zone to desist from this protest based on the history they have as far as protest is concerned in Nigeria. Some southern extraction from the northern part of the country have also established the same thing. There seems to be this, you know, back and forth. And I mean, there seems to be this tribal and ethnic uh, dimension to this protest. Should it be? Well, there has always been. Uh, you know, if it's another man that is there, the... the but most of the time, you know, that the political leaders usually play two kites most of the time when people are against them it's either the tribal kite or the religious uh, uh, religion uh, kite uh, because those two those, those two things you know really touches um, uh, touch uh, nigerians a lot mm. you don't talk about uh, a, a religious leader anyhow <laughs> you may be you, you you may be executed uh, without without trial, or uh, you don't attack any any tribe like that, and that is why I see I concur with uh, uh, our dear uh, late father Bafemi Awolo that Nigeria is not yet a nation; it's just a geographical expression. expression. Yeah, because we are supposed to be Nigerians before Yorubas, before Igbos, before thieves, before Yorubas. But of course, we are more of Urubo or Yoruba or uh, Iowa than Nigerians. So we have something from that have to happen. Then uh, you see, and that is why even Mr. President himself is meeting with the Obas, the the traditional rulers and the and the clerics, so that at the end of the day, probably something may be done to douse the tension. Uh, if there's if if because you you know even I think. Uh, some people even from here in the Yoruba are saying the Yorubas will not join and uh, that even if any any um, protest should take place, it should take place in Abuja and not Lagos. But Jonathan was in Abuja when the uh, 2012 uh, happened mm. and a whole lot of, and even the 2010 uh, year too. So, but at least they are trying to say, okay, do not, you know, even during the election, the tribal uh, kite was you know, thrown to mm. here in the West. 
that 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 your child your 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 female child cannot have a gorgeous waist and you put the beat on another no, no, person's no. waist so <laughs> uh, child's weight so to that extent it's usually done at least probably to 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 break the bands of the protesters mm. probably to be sincere i I, I i i have i have a caveat to to this protest too okay especially when i saw the the, the hashtags no no it's not even the hashtag okay. well okay it's not even the hashtag but their demand okay. especially regarding uh the uh, the freedom of namdikano mm. that's not part of the thing why should we just wake up one day and be, let namdikano's issue become that of the nation mm. of course it has issues with government but we we have been saying it that if you can free or if you can do something about uh, Sunday Bo, then uh, Nabdi Kanu too should should be released or whatever political thing that they may use. Irrespective of the fact that Mr. Sunday Bo is a Yoruba man like us, but because we we believe that what is good for the goose is also good for the gander. Mm. So, but the 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 the, the fact that they are adding that. You know, gives a lot of you no. Know, though they might want to do it to attract the boys, because they have been saying that the boys will not join. The boys mm. don't. So probably they throw in that one to just attract them to it. But to me, it's it's, it's a no no. Mm. And majority of the uh, their demands, this the demands a constitutional change. Uh, that the that the national assembly should become one, uh, House of Rep alone. That cannot be done by Mr. President alone. Uh, that uh, a whole lot of them, about three or four of them, have to do with constitutional change. So what I think they are doing, in essence, is that let there be. And in fact, they even wrote it there that there should be a sovereign conference where we have to think of the future of this country. Mm -hmm. And we have been saying it from the beginning. Even when when the, when our rulers are saying that Nigeria is not negotiable, I kept telling us Nigeria was a negotiated country. We have several constitutional uh, meetings, conferences, both in London, in Nigeria, elsewhere, before we, we, we got our independence in, 20, in, in, 19, in 1960. So Nigeria is a negotiated country. To that extent, everything regarding it can be negotiated. So it's telling us that it's not negotiable is trying to tell us that it's that, that, that fixed. Mm -hmm. Nothing is fixed. We are different religions, different tribes, different ways of doing things. Then to that extent, as a nation, I mean, as a federation, you have to be uh, constituent states doing what they like to do in their way, you know, with a somehow, quote, weak uh, center, and not for the state to go to the center to be collecting money every month. It is an affront on federation, and it cannot work. And probably that is why the, our federation is, seems not to be working. So we have to rework that constitution to enable us to have a, a Nigeria that was actually killed in 1966. Maybe we can, reveal, we can revive it and ensure that lives continue, even for, for, for incoming generations. Mm. The program is still Voice of Liberation on Pension as 106. Well and for now, we'll be going for another musical break. And when we're back, we'll be talking about the controversy surrounding Dangote Refinery. We'll be right back. <laughs> Standing in the rain, I see the clouds go gray. From the roars and the earth sings, the season's just beginning. Sunlight it hides as the clouds make way. Pouring out my blessings, I will not be afraid I see it now, I understand, I know So I embrace it, dance In the rain it's for my seed to grow For every prayer and every seed I've sown the Lord of the harvest knows I'm looking back a hundredfold The land is green, it's green, oh, oh the land is green, it's green Can't you see? The harvest is ready The Lord of the harvest told me so It's green, it's green for me It's green, it's green 
written in for me Standing alone can be a heavy load But my vows I won't be breaking Though my heart is aching I got a word and I won't let go It's your will I'm sick and so I keep on believing I see it now, I understand, I know So I embrace it then once again, it's time for me to grow For every prayer and every tear I've shown Lord of the harvest knows I'm even joy a hundredfold The land is green, it's green, oh, oh The land is green, it's green that you see The harvest is ready The Lord of the harvest told me so It's green, it's green for me Business is to seek for the voiceless and demand better deals for the vulnerable. Stakeholders must be alive to their responsibilities to the people. If they are not, we will shout. The program is Voice of Liberation on Pensioners 106.7 FM at Barigu, Onuriki, Ibadan, or your state, Nigeria. Have you learned a voice today? Thanks for sticking around. The program is Voice of Liberation on Tension as well as six. Well, in terms of him, I still have my guest with me in the studio. Uh, I'm talking of Mr. Dissung of Joko as well as uh, Barista Fulusho or Lapo. Of course, you can also join the conversation this morning by calling the studio line to 0908 111 1067 706-639-1367. You can also join the conversation via our Facebook page, Pensioner Space FM. Once you type Pensioner Space FM on your Facebook app, you have the chance to watch us live and also give uh, your comment. Now, uh, before we went on that musical break, I said, of course, we're going to be talking about uh, controversy surrounding the uh, Dangote refinery, the 650,000 barrels per day uh, capacity refinery. Uh, of course, when this refinery came on board, you know, there was this optimism on the on the part of some Nigerians that perhaps this will be the game changer when it comes to oil production in the nation, and perhaps it will help to resolve some of the challenges we have as far as uh, oil production is concerned in Nigeria. But then recently there has been this back and forth, you know, there has been this uh, face-off, so to say, between Aliko Dangote, the owner of the refinery, and of course some oil regulators talking about the NNPCL, which is the major uh, player. And of course, the NMDPRA, the Nigerian Mystery and Down Trip uh, Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Now, of course, it has been, uh, there was an allegation against uh, Dangote of trying to monopolize uh, the oil sector in Nigeria. That was what was the allegation leveled against uh, 
uh, Dan Kote. Of course, it was also uh, levied against him that the uh, product coming from his uh, refinery is inferior. It's inferior, actually, as compared to what has been imported into uh, the country. Of course, uh, it was also said that uh, Dan Kote refinery is yet to be fully licensed. Okay, so these are some of the uh, arguments on the part of the oil regulators. Now, Dan Kote himself has also said some few things as far as this uh, uh, argument, as, all, as far as all of this argument is concerned. He said uh, that there are some cabas who are trying to frustrate the operations of the Dan Kote refinery. In fact, he called them mafia. In, this, in <laughs> fact, he said that they are perhaps worse than what we have in when it comes to drug mafia. And he said that uh, some officials of NNPCL, they have a blended uh, oil blender, actually, or oil plant blender, whatever it is, in uh, Malta, where they secretly refine products. I mean, very powerful allegation leveled against NNPCL. You know, he also made mention of the fact that, well, as regards the, uh, the stake of NNPCL in his refinery, it's not 20% or 20-something percent. Uh, you know that is just about seven percent and perhaps we don't even know the stake uh, at the moment so there's been this back and forth and quite a number of people have spoken about all of this arguments but then the concern of some people is that we shouldn't even be talking about this at all that the fact that this is our own industry our own local industry it should be a thing of joy for us and shouldn't call for all of this uh, arguments mr this one joko that's uh bickering mm. uh, let me say brickmanship <laughs> 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 between, between dangote group and of course uh, agencies of government you know i like it <laughs> and why thank you nmpc and the nmd uh nndpra now uh, they are turning themselves to a, a, a agent of sabotage mm -hmm. to our economy. Kudos to Buhari. If Buhari did not achieve anything eh, mm. economically, the fact that he was able to diversify mm. the focus of government from oil to non oil revenue, it was under him that the revenue that comes from non oil rose okay. way above mm. the whole revenue mm. otherwise these demons that are in those agencies would have made this country to become something else because they are working for some people and i want to believe the president's invisible hand is in all of this dan Gote wouldn't have been making such statements He's a member of his economic team mm. <laughs> there are implications mm. to that kind of thing if the president is not in the know because the media is not saying anything about that. Mm. And people are not saying anything mm. to that regard. I want to believe he's in the know. Mm. Expose them. Mm. That is what will give me the leverage to deal with them. Because even Atiku Abubakar said, when he first said in 2019 that he's going to sell the NNPC, I criticized him because I didn't understand what he was yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was much later that this man is actually making sense. That company needs to be liquidated. Mm. And all this revelation is what will give avenue to that liquidation. Dangote, for now, according to investigation, is the one that is right. Mm. By now, in the Sena society, Farouk Hamid mm. should be facing prosecution mm. for economic sabotage. In fact, it should be on the, they should be preparing the cell for him, mm. where they will lock him up for a number of years that the law will permit him to be locked up in there because no government official will come out in the open mm. to be, because even before then the Senate were already on his trail mm. for issuing import licenses when we already have a <laughs> refinery of that magnitude in the country those whom you have issued licenses to what are they supposed to do with the license import product and be competing with local ones or what when this one that we have already now they are accusing Dangote of uh, substandard. The man has took the lawmakers to his laboratory. Mm. They tested the fuel, mm. tested the one that they brought from other mm. filling station that the NNPC had imported. Mm. They saw the one that is of good quality. Better quality. Better quality. Mm. He that is saying when 
two years ago that bad oil petrol was imported into this country mm. was it not among those that mm. supervised the importation who have who attacked them what happened to them they still kept their job and is opening his mouth to be saying that they said it's monopoly <laughs> that is even a shame yeah because NNPC has the capacity to compete with Dangote. Mm. Dangote has just one refinery. Yes, mm. 650,000 mm. crude uh, barrel. Mm. You have four refineries, mm. all under refor uh, re renovation. Mm. Portacos is the closest to being completed, mm. and you keep shifting the goalposts mm. every now and then as regards the dates of commencement of operation. Why are you making noise if mm. you really have shame? If what Dangote is not right about the motor blending plant mm. why have you refused to fix the refinery mm. you keep claiming turn around maintenance money every year mm. you keep paying salaries of refinery workers for not doing anything and you've been doing that for years you are the same person claiming subsidy money for the government and you've not remitted a dime in the past five months mm. so when you look at all of this some people should be facing firing squad by now <laughs> That is just the truth. Every single one of them in that company and the agency. So when you look at all of that, you are not saying, let me explain what a blending plant means. It's not a refinery. Mm -hmm. It's more of a reservoir where already refined products will be put into another chemicals added to increase the volume, mm -hmm. making it substandard so that they will make more money from heat. That is what they do in Malta. And they are claiming ignorance. That is the source of that substandard product that almost spoiled people's engine the other mm, time. Mm. You understand? How are those things getting into the country? Now you have <laughs> 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 not just a refinery, mm. a petrochemical complex. Yeah. Uh. More than 12 value chain mm. of the crude oil mm. will be processed in that plant. Mm. Plus 12,000 megawatts of electricity. Mm. That will supply what IBDC will need to fix out West mm. uninterrupted. And some people, I don't want to use unprintable words yes, because if I really have a gun, I will not <laughs> hesitate before dealing with because how can you be doing that to, to this nation? <laughs> you have to slow down a bit. You know, some people, no, 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 that is, I have yeah, to express yeah. this anger yeah, so that Nigerians will know if, fact, if you want to protest, this house should be the first place to mm. start because these are people that should be strict naked in the public. Mm. For doing that kind of disservice to this nation. I may not like Dangote as a person. Of course. You understand? But we are talking about oil and gas here. Nigeria is the only, for the record, Nigeria is the only oil producing country. Mm, important. We are the sixth, number sixth in the, the world. world yeah. And we are the only one importing refined petroleum products. Netherlands has no oil. Netherlands has the largest refinery in Europe. And we even buy from them mm. as shameless as we are mm. as a nation and these people supervising that they are still coming to now the market such an edifice that even foreigners are applauding look at what akim said now yeah yeah you understand these are th people we should listen to mm. not some bunch of uh, <laughs> or, 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 or ungrateful <laughs> individuals <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who are just privileged because mm. if they have mm. something in their brain mm. working, they mm. will not be doing that kind of mm. thing. And these are mega rich people mm. who have stolen so much from mm. the commonwealth of the nation. You're now coming out to be issued. I don't know why he's still keeping his job. That's another question that we should That's area where the government we have used nepotism and tribalism or whatever to rubbish, so. to rubbish our system and we complain it's not working. You understand? Sure. So, on this one, I stand with Dan Gote. I mm. may not agree with him on any other thing, but mm. on this refinery, yes. because I know what the benefit we would derive from it, we not only be <laughs> consuming our refined mm. products, mm. we also be exporting mm. it. Value-added mm. products yeah. that will increase our GDP, increase our forex, mm. boost our balance of trade, mm. uh, 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 boost our balance of trade. Mm. So when you look at all of these economic benefits, benefits mm. one individual mm. or a group of individuals cannot say that they, they, they are they know more than the mm. rest of us. Mm. That is mm. really uncalled for and should be condemned. They will. All right. Uh, I Marista. think that will give you a hand of applause. <laughs> all right, Mister <laughs> uh, Felicia Lafo. What do you uh, make of all of this?
In fact, no argument. He, 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 my friend said everything, and I'm very happy. I want to say thank you. <laughs> I've said this one again today in another platform. Almost everything he said. But one thing I will just add is this. My eyes opened when this thing started to know why Nigeria is not working. Yeah. If you attack energy of any country, then that country will not work. They successfully attacked uh, energy regarding mm -hmm. petroleum, crude, and everything. They attacked it, took it away from government. They attacked il energy, electricity, took, a took it away from government. And government now was in ICT. They don't know what they do. The government itself is confused. And why is that? Because majority of the, a, a, a fruit will not fall too far from its tree. Majority of the mafia, quote and unquote, are still in the corridor of the corridor of power. Mm. You know why this country will not work? There's nothing anybody can do that will make it work. If we turn ourselves to a collective nuisance. What a whole nation cannot do. Only one person achieved that. And you are trying to call that person a bad name to hang him. That one person. Of course, it might, it might have been one of them. Because he said it, that he was advised not to go into... Mm, not to invest sure. in So he might have... Not even to go into oil business, mm. especially. Or to in invest such among us amount of uh, money, money investment in Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm. But he loves Nigeria. Look at Gabon. Gabon was so happy they were inviting him already. Tax free everything. Just come and invest in you know he ha he, ha he had other uh, uh, business uh, investment in some other African countries. But let's even take Nigeria. What government was doing was like a two edged sword. Of course, they were demarketing Dangote the same way they are demarketing their own economy. So because, like um, Olaru Timi said in his book, the gods are not to blame. He said, if crocodile eats their own eggs, what would they not do to the flesh of a frog? So if your own person invested in your country and you demarketed, demarketed him to this extent, then what will you not do to an outsider? Mm. Uh, I love Mawura and Nipe and it told and to wash or to Temole. Nobody tell me because this upon a fire. So those ones will be, you know, they will be scared of coming to invest in here. Nigeria. Mm. And the ones that are already here will be living in droves because they know that this country is, a, is, 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 is an unserious one. In fact, they are constituting themselves into a nuisance. What a country. Today, Mr. Naji, the then is it the Minister of uh, Power or whatever? Yeah, no, that was in charge of you know privatizing all these discos. Then that was, and it was booted out. Powers against him, you know, rose against him that yeah, he's one of them. He wanted to get one of those things, but look what he's done in his hometown. Why? Because they know that. If this country is liberated, if we can get fuel at almost a cent and there's light 247, that artisan at uh, Uwo Road may not need to go and buy fuel to do this thing and whoever is going to patronize them is going to pay less. Mm. But they don't want that. They want them, them and their generations and their children and unborn children to be at the top. So that every other Nigerians could be rack and dede in them if there is anything like that. But again, we have to know this. That when we come to interest of the people, the interest of the people most of the time is not what the politicians do by themselves. And that is the essence of the protest in the first place. When politicians talk, when they do anything, it's not about the people. People are just, I don't know, they are just 
I don't know whether they are deceived or they don't know. They are too ignorant to know that when a politician says it's for the people, it's not for the people. You see them going to court and one will win. You say that is the clinical of democracy. Another one will lose. You say this is a banana republic. The same judgment. So until and unless we understand this fact that this the 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 the, the, the problem of Nigeria mm. start from the mass uh, from the leaders themselves. Mm. All right, just a few seconds. There's one on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks. Yes, yes I'm Shegu. Yes, I'm Shegu for Abata. Yes, thanks for joining us on the show. Your take. Yes, please, can I quickly say something about the proposal? I mean, uh, the, the the plan strike. I mean, uh, the plan. A protest. Can I please say something about it? Please. Please. I want to tell Nigerians. This protest, they have in mind to go about it. But Nigeria is going through galloping uh, inflation. This, this is a situation where you have to increase your own income. And this president is ready for that. TUC met the president. Uh, the uh, NSC met the president. Salary from minimum wage from 30,000 or there about to 70,000. So you two have to. Like, the protest may not may not profit Nigerians. They may not get anything from it. You find your way, your organization. If what you profit, if your gain from 500 watt of, of wood is 15 naira before, it has to be 500 naira now. If you if you if you buy for after every, if you buy for 1,000 naira, let's say you spend spend out to get the wood, you have to sell for 1,000 to or there about instead of. Again. So you have to double your gain this time around. But be fair the Nigerians, be fair. So this about Gallup, the president has made it known that no going back on South Africa. So when you go and protest, you will still come back. You see come back and sit down. The same thing happened and start protest. You still have to discuss it. He is open for conversation. He wants to meet you. He's ready for dialogue. He asked Nigerians to come. All right, so thank you for uh, expressing your own thoughts as far as that is uh, are concerned. Now, quickly, because, of course, uh, this is to announce to you that uh, in order to ensure the continued quality of our broadcast services on this radio, there will be shortened down facilities uh, for scheduled maintenance immediately after this program. And, of course, we sincerely apologize for any inconvenience.